That's the line for people waiting to get in to see the balloon inflation. We are at the end of one block. There's Pam. Behind all these people here. And then one block up at the corner is where you enter in to go through security to go see the balloon inflation. So we're actually not too bad. We're just one block back. We got here at 11, a little after 11, and they're supposed to open it at 12. So we've seen a huge uptick in number of people who are showing up. So just be prepared if this is something that you want to do. You want to be here. Probably, if you want to be at the front of the line, you probably have to be here at least two plus hours early. So once you get through the checkpoint um, at 72nd and Columbus, you have to walk the whole length of the street here in order to get to where we will be having our bags checked. Once we get our bags checked, then we will be able to enter Central Park to see the balloons. So just be aware of this if you are uh, disabled in any way. You're going to be walking a lot and if you want to, if uh, you have kids, you want to have a stroller, if uh, you have someone who needs a wheelchair or a walker, just they need to know that they have a lot of walking to do, okay? Oh, there it is all the way down there. Oh, I know you hate this song. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. I 
Tava de volta e de everyone it's Teresa again with the empty armchair and I wanted to give you our thoughts from doing the balloon inflation today um, next to Central Park so this is the lowdown as far as what happened today so it was supposed to open at noon we arrived a little after 11 this morning and the line was already one block long that's fine I have no problem with that so um, the entrance was at 72nd and Columbus. We were at 73rd and Columbus in front of the Starbucks. And um, during the time, more and more people started showing up. More and more people were getting um, in line behind us. By They did not open it until about 1215. And by then the line had already wrapped around and people were passing, going past us back towards 72nd um, in order to go inside to see. So when you go inside, you go in through the entrance that's on the left and um, you have to walk the whole length of the block to Central Park West. And then once we got to Central Park West, we had to go through security. So you had, if you had bags, you had to open your bags you also uh, had to be scanned with one of those scanner things to see if you had any metal you know, with you. Um, they did have one line that was for people who didn't have any bags at all, which was nice. Um, but they do say no backpacks. We had our purses, that was fine. Um, and then they let us in. So once you get through that point, you're walking along Central Park for about four blocks, I think. They're pretty long blocks, and I show that, I'll intersperse that, some of this um, footage while I'm talking here to explain it, but we had to walk about four blocks just to get to where the, um, the start of the floats were. So they had that turkey float that always starts the parade, and then that is on Central Park. So you had the her, the um, floats were along Central Park, but then along the avenue, they then had the floats. I mean, I'm sorry, the balloons. So we had about three or four balloons that were already inflated. They are in the process of inflating the balloons now. So they have them under netting and they're weighted down and they already had some that were inflated for us to be able to view otherwise the other ones are all laid out in the order in which they're going to go um, in the parade. And then they're just going to go down the line and start inflating all of them tonight. So you get to go through and um, there was plenty of opportunities to um, take photos and to talk to some of the people that were watching, you know, the over the people and um, the answering any questions that people might have. They also did have a little... Um, scanner thing that you could shoot with your phone and it would tell you about the balloons along the way but we didn't do that since I was doing the videotape. So um, you go down the one street and then you have to walk another two blocks I think and then you go down another street and then they have more balloons that you can um, check out. I think that was at 80 first 
82nd, something like that, they had um, another batch of balloons. The last, ba the last balloon that we saw that was fully inflated was Ronald McDonald. Um, and then what's interesting, which I didn't realize that they were offering, um, as you go to exit um, along Central Park West, you can either go to the left or you can go to the right. So if you go to the right and walk all the way back to 72nd, so like 10 blocks, you can see all the floats that are already in line and they're assembling the floats as well as they're blowing out the balloons. So, and then you can also go to the left, um, which will take you towards the back, um, the second half of the floats. The closest exit back to Columbus um, is 84th Street. And so that's what we did because Pam was in a lot of pain. She's still dealing with her torn meniscus and she's got ankle issues. So it was really hard for her. She was a real trooper today um, doing the walk. But um, it was relatively okay until we, the, the, the ground was pretty flat until we finished the parade. And then you got along Central Park West and then the the street is, it's almost like cobbles. They have cobbles um, on both sides. And then the sidewalk is um, not flat. Um, so if you have issues, if you're gonna be walking with a cane or if you're gonna be pushing someone in a wheelchair, just know that there's, um, it's, it's not even. And also, People were coming just to see the um, the floats and not the um, balloons because they have the balloon area from Central Park West. Um, you can't go in from there. You can only access the balloons from 72nd and Columbus. Otherwise, you can walk along Central Park and see the floats, but you can't go into the streets in order to see the actual balloons being inflated. So um, there was a lot of cross traffic at the end when we were trying to get back to Columbus when we were done. Um, but it was nice to see because we saw some of the floats were, um, were being assembled. So we saw um, the Disney cruise ship that was being assembled and they were putting the top stack of the ship on. So that was kind of cool to see that. Um, they have several new floats that are um, going to be out this year as well as a couple of new balloons as well. So my recommendation for you is if you want to come and see the balloons being inflated, uh, be there at least an hour early in order to get in that line. You do not want to waste your time um, waiting in line. So we got done and then we went and had lunch. And then um, we were picked up by our Lyft driver around three o'clock and we headed back to um, our hotel here in Midtown. And the line now, um, in order to go in to access the balloons was crazy long. I don't know how those people are even gonna get in to see it, in all honesty. It went on for blocks and it roped around as well. Massively long lines. Seriously, if you want to do this, make certain you go early, 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 early. So at least an hour early. Um, I think I overheard the woman who was at the head of the line saying she was two hours early um, in order to go see the balloons. But, um, you know, it's not something that you're going to want to, you know, oh, we'll just go, you know, in the new, in the afternoon or mm -mm. I don't recommend it. You'll be spending more time standing in the line just to get into it. And they close at six, you know, so you don't want to run the risk of missing it. So um, again, I'm much into planning and I really would recommend that you get there as early as possible. So anyway, that's where we're at today. Um, tonight is an early night. I am going out in the morning um, to stake out my spot on the line. I'm going to be front row and center and I'll be doing this live. Um, 
by the time you see this video, um, it will already have happened, but um, I will link the live video in the description below and also up here so that you are able to um, see what, what it's like to actually go to the, to the parade. My plan is to get up at about 3 a.m and to be on the parade route around four so if I can scope out. I have a I have an idea of where I wanna be. I don't know if I'll be allowed to be in that spot, but I'm gonna try really hard. Um, the weather is um, agreeable. So it's supposed to be in the 40s. We'll be a little blustery since we had a lot of rain last night and into this morning, but um, the high tomorrow I think is supposed to be 55. Um, so not bad weather and it's going to be sunny and um, they're saying that the wind, is, the threshold is supposed to be enough that the balloon should be at their regular height and not down closer to the street. So we're looking forward to that. I think Pam's going to stay here because her leg is really bothering her and I'm a little bummed for her her not being able to come, but you know, she has to take care of herself. So anyway, I hope that you find this um, video helpful and that you should definitely do this. I think everybody should come to New York and experience the Macy's Day Parade live if they possibly can. Um, we've been having a wonderful time here this week and uh, we still have a couple more days to go. So we're excited about that as well. So anyway, um, stay tuned and we will see you tomorrow on the parade route. Have a great day. Bye.